Hi everyone, welcome to Buffalo Ridge Elementary. We're so glad you guys are here and have chosen Buffalo Ridge as your school. Uh, my name is Jen Murdoch Jakeaway and we have our assistant principal, Dr. Robert Thielen. And here's a little fun photo of us since we're having to do this virtually and normally I would be introducing everyone in person. So for tonight, you're gonna get pictures of everyone instead of all of us here live. So our kindergarten team is Mrs. Gale, Mrs. Rumminger, and Mrs. Estrada. And here is a picture of them. It's always good to kind of put a face to a name. And for those of you that are new, this will give you a little bit of a rundown of our staff. And for those of you that aren't new and maybe just need a refresher, uh, here it is for you. So our first grade team is Mrs. Bird, Miss Sykes, and Miss Corbetta. And Mrs. Sykes is new to first grade this year. Our second grade team is Ms. Setterston, Ms. McGuire, and Mrs. Chastain. And our third grade team is Ms. Henderson, Ms. Schaffner, and Mrs. DiLoretto. Our fourth grade team is Ms. Hartman, Ms. Montgomery, and Ms. Harmio. And our fifth grade team, new to fifth grade this year, is Ms. Andrew, Ms. Powers, and Ms. Chartier. Our specials teachers, I mean, look at how talented these guys are. This picture literally brought me to tears when I first saw it. We have Mrs. Denault, who's our music teacher, Mr. Rickman, who is our art teacher, and Mrs. Weinrich, who is our new PE teacher. And we even put Mrs. Harmon in this photo because we needed an extra golden girl. So they are just so much fun. And you can imagine what is to come when you see this photo of all of them. Um, our special service providers, we have, um, Here's a fun little headshot of each one of them, and then I will go through sort of what they're, who they are and what their role is at our building. We have Sarah Ford, who is our new speech pathologist. We have uh, Jennifer Newnham, who is our speech and language pathologist assistant, and uh, she will help pull groups and things like that if you're wondering kind of what that job is. Jen Romero is our moderate needs teacher. Uh, Amelia Grazer is our SSN teacher, our significant needs teacher. And Elizabeth Gennaro is our OT. Peggy Wood is our gifted and talented facilitator. And Jen Miller is our reading interventionist. And Lisa Fugit is our school nurse consult. Jen Miller is also our English language learner teacher. So she has a couple roles in our building. Um, about four days ago or five days ago, we sent you out a survey and just sort of asked like, what do you need to know for back to school night during these kind of different changing times? So we wanted to kind of set this up in the format of, we wanted to take your feedback and then make sure that we were able to answer your questions through this presentation. So these are our kind of survey results. We had put some big questions out there of, hey, do you want to know about this, this, or this? And then we gave you guys an opportunity to put in other topics. And we took the topics that had sort of the most question around them and we went ahead and put them into slides and then we were able to answer a few of the other ones as well throughout this presentation. So this just gives you a little bit of an idea of what information we collected. Asynchronous learning at home. Uh, this allows for flexibility at home, provides a balance between learning and family needs and individual pacing throughout the day. Um, we know how hard this is and how hard this can be, especially with working parents and everything else, and we wanna work with you. Uh, just like things are being put on you, things are being put on us um, from the state and the district, and not in a bad way, it's just a lot of things need to happen. So in order for all those moving parts to happen, we just have to have an awesome partnership. And if something isn't working for you or isn't working for your family, we understand that like we have to put a plan out there for everyone and then what doesn't work we can make adjustments where they need to be so we're very early in the process um, for some of your students it's only been two days of, of all this kind of stuff as far as the new routine starting so please have some patience with us we want the feedback we want to make adjustments so we are ensuring that your family life isn't completely blown up and that you know we're able to support kids where we can uh, synchronous learning opportunities. Although it was put out there that this wouldn't be happening, we met as a SAC committee before the school year started and there was a definite, um, there was definite feedback around like, hey, anything you guys can do to help us get our kids up in the morning and you know, if there's any way that they can connect and obviously with our teachers teaching all day, uh, with the group that's presently at school, it's hard to kind of respond to emails and be in both places at once. So 
we are working to try and find ways to connect our students that are at home with our students that are at school. So a few synchronous learning opportunities that we came up with and some, some positive things around them were a whole group, whole group collaboration focused on social, emotional, and academic growth of our students. Um, it helps to develop a sense of student collective e efficacy and builds routines and schedules during at-home learning. So this might look like a morning meeting. It might look like a read aloud that could be from their teacher, could be from Ms. Robinson from the Learning Commons. It could mean um, something fun like a dance party or an ice cream party or something fun where you're doing everything virtually, obviously. Um, it also might look like Number Corner. Uh, that is a, a math piece that people can, can sign into. Um, that is kind of a little bit of a routine in the morning that's easier to follow. So these are just some opportunities that, although aren't required, we are trying to hear your needs and accommodate where we can. Just the, one of the biggest things to think about is this all takes technology. In order for all this to happen, um, someone has to be filming you. You have to have some type of device to be able to film. And so some of this might look a little bit different because teachers are kind of setting their computers up or kids are holding an iPad. And so it's not going to be perfect, but um, we are definitely trying to, to meet your needs with that. Learning expectations, that was another thing that was kind of screamed loud and clear on the survey. And we had just put down mastering the learning expectations and benchmarks set for the 2020 Colorado Academic Standards. We understand these things are lofty. However, we're gonna try everything that we can and come up with systems that can help your, your child get everything that they need to get in order to um, have all the learning happen for their grade level that they are in. Students will not spend their entire asynchronous days in front of a device. We're trying to make it so they are doing things that are on the computer, off the computer, and still meeting their learning needs. Um, students' learning will be pushed on e-learning days. It's not just going to be a time for review or things like that. Like They're going to have to be taking what they've learned and applying it. They're going to have to be critically thinking about things in order to answer questions. Um, we've kind of done that. Learning has been flipped so students can develop a solid schema of major concepts and skills before entering at-home learning days. So teachers are trying to front load kids as much as possible. Some of that's through videos, some of that's through readings that they're having them do. So they're able to be more successful on those at-home days, which puts less, less responsibility on everybody else. Um, learning at home should not overwhelm families, so please reach out to teachers to create a plan that works for you and your child's education. Obviously, we know that if you're anything like us, I mean, we are all overwhelmed right now, so I mean, I know that that's sort of a silly statement to make because you're feeling overwhelmed, but we can only control what we know about, so you have to communicate with us. And, and please communicate in a way that you would want to be communicated with. Like, we're all doing the best that we can, and although it seems like, oh my gosh, how can they expect me to do this, or what does this look like? Um, we're really trying to have things run through the students as much as possible and um, use them as, you know, you need to be in control of your own learning what, with what's possible but also know that we completely understand that lots of us have jobs and can't be both places at once and can't be helping someone while you're supposed to be doing something else. So all we're asking is that you just communicate so we can come up with a plan and be in the know so you can feel supported and we can feel supported. So if we see that your you know, student isn't engaged in something or hasn't turned something in or whatever, we know where you're coming from. Like, hey, we're gonna catch our kid up over the weekend when we have more time. So we'll participate where we can. We just wanna make sure that we come up with a, a process together so we know what's happening. Masks at school. Um, students and staff safety is our number one priority. Currently, students are expected to wear their masks in the building and at recess with mass breaks taking place outside of a controlled setting. However, as students become more adjusted to social distancing, the requirements for masks at recess is, is gonna possibly be revisited. 
Um, the thing that we have to remember is we have a lot of people coming in and out of here. We have a lot of staff that work here. And in order just to kind of honor where everyone's at with this, there's so many differing opinions. You know, some people say masks don't matter. Some people say masks completely matter and I'm not coming to work if they don't. Students are uneasy with masks. Some students are fine with masks. So it's really an adjustment and a flexing that everyone is doing. And I wish you guys could be a fly on the wall here because they are doing an amazing job. And we are not riding around on broomsticks and hammering kids for what they don't have. We know that this is an adjustment and everyone is just doing the best that they can. And so we're giving some gentle reminders, but for now, I just really wanna be able to ensure that I'm providing an environment that is allowing for people to feel safe and for right now that is going to, to be a mask everywhere but please know that we are giving plenty of breaks the kids are you know taking breaks when they're eating and allowed to have a mask break when needed so just know that we know that this is difficult for some people but again we're working on it and um, we just really appreciate your support with it car loop um, rob and i would like to thank you all um, to our parents for their continued support as we transition our old bus loop into the new car loop. Um, this new system better ensures social distancing guidelines are met and it's a safe way to bring students in and out of the building. Um, what we found is we've got it down to like 10 minutes at the end of the day and about 10 minutes at the beginning of the day and I know you're like, oh, I'm sitting in this line, it's, it's a bugger, but Truthfully, it has been so great for our kids. We've got eyes on them the whole way in. We've got staff stationed throughout building. Throughout the building, we've got a plan for when they get into the classroom, and it's really just running, been running smoothly, and that is so thanks to you guys and your patients. So we just appreciate that so much. Little tweaks will be coming. Um, with that, it might be easier if we find some way to have your visor flipped down with your last name on it. We know that inclement weather is going to be coming where we're going to have a lightning dismissal or it's going to be snowing and we can't all be out there. So we're going to add little pieces as we go and each week we're going to get a little bit better at this. And so hopefully it will continue to not be um, painful for everyone but we do appreciate those of you that have just worked so hard to follow the process and give us that extra time because it has it has it's been a game changer for us so thank you so much two big rocks this year um, our goals are around professional learning communities and culture and well-being you know two things that we feel very strongly about um, through the lens of the PLCs we have our Colorado academic standards bridges is our math program thinking Thinking Maps is a way to sort of wrap um, our thinking around all subject areas. We have Wonders is a reading program that we use for kindergarten through third grade. And common, common formative and summative assessments are just those kind of quick checks that we do and kind of those end of unit checks that we do. We've incorporated a new schedule this year and in that we've worked in pre-time and pre-time is going to be an awesome time where different service providers and teachers are able to really focus on ways to um, preview, review, and extend based on whatever your child needs. So if they need help with something, um, that will be a time where, where people are going to flood in and, and be a, a support. We're trying to focus on the whole child, um, osmosis of heart and mind thinking about their social emotional learning, what do they need. Um, we have a second step program and we have an amazing counselor, her name is Miss Nardi, and she, she helps us focus on social and emotional learning. She'll do lunch bunches, she goes into lunch, she watches how kids interact at recess. She is fantastic and the, te the classroom teachers invite her in all the time to help if the class is struggling with something or there's opportunities provided for your child to go and talk at any time. Um, it's just really nice to just have another adult in the building to turn to and that's, that's on your team and will lend a listening ear. Um, we're heard here at Buffalo Ridge Elementary. Uh, we have heard shout outs and this is an awesome way just to recognize kids. Students are able to do this. Um, students are able to receive these. Our teachers in all different areas of the building can pass these out. So we have our um, A for academic excellence, our H for honest, E for empathetic, R for respectful, and D for dedicated. And we just look at 
we look for these traits throughout the building and we look to try and find them when you don't know we're looking so it's more like oh you you've worked this in and this is something that you kind of live and breathe every day so these are these are the type of characteristics that we we look for here at Buffalo Ridge you might hear um, as leaders of the herd we want to promote positive behaviors and give our students tools to be productive and compassionate citizens and so we have some large buffalo that students will get recognized in Buffy travels on Friday and um, goes to different classrooms and is recognizing those students that have um, really stood out for that week so you might hear about the buffalo that they got the buffalo this week so hopefully it will be something that they'll be excited about. We also have Buffalo Nichols, just another opportunity for kids to be recognized um, for something outstanding that we've seen. So your students might be bringing these home um, and telling you maybe why they earned it, things like that. So be encouraging on that. Uh, we're always focusing on the whole child, as I mentioned earlier. We have our um, MTSS, which is our multi-tiered system of support, and it just really helps us look at all the different components and elements of our children, I mean, it's it just, there are so many, we're, we're complex creatures and we want to make sure that we're paying attention to all the different components. So usually there's always a reason if something is happening and we want to make sure that we have systems in place to get to the root cause of things so we can be as productive as possible in helping fix the problem and move forward. And that can mean academically, it can be for our High, our high learners, our struggling learners, um, it's really based off of child needs. So we do have a system in place, we do meet, and we talk about all of our kids and just how do we need to support them? What are they missing? What do they need? And um, that's, that's that. Pre-time, I was talking earlier about how we changed our schedule. So pre-time is the preview, review, and extend. This time is a systematic approach um to meet the academic needs of every student at buffalo ridge elementary so we're hoping that if it's something that you're struggling with you'll have the supports wrapped around you um, to review it if you are ready to move on to something we're going to preview it for you before we teach it to you and if um, what we're working on maybe isn't you're above where that is academically we're going to work on ways to extend where your child is at so this is pretty exciting for us. We also have a school-wide systematic approach to support all students, which we're calling, we have a common math block, which we've never done before. So the entire school will have that at the same time. This will give us the ability to move students up grade levels in math, that they have mastered essential math standards. Um, and we will be looking at all that information through a body of evidence. With our current regulations, we are not able to do this right now, even though we set it up in our schedule to make it possible. Um, we didn't know, obviously, that this was coming, so as soon as we're able to do more with this, we'll keep you guys posted and we'll let you know if that's happening. But we do have the systems in place, so if we do flex one way or another, we are able to rock and roll right when we are able to do that. So this is pretty exciting for us, too. Um, community handbook. Over the summer, a community handbook was created to outline the important rules and procedures at BRE to ensure the safety and well-being of every person within our building. This handbook will be directly linked to the BRE website. So it just kind of answers those common questions, especially for those of you that are new. And since people haven't really been able to come into the building and kind of see some of our processes, this might be just another tool for you to look at and use. Um, activities and programs, another thing that isn't happening at the moment, but when we do have school, these are some typical things that we have here at Buffalo Ridge. So we have our gifted and talented students, we have a dream team, that's sort of like our student council, um, band is offered, orchestra, health team four. It's a, a great group of, of kids that helps us be thinking about our personal wellness. Green team is around, you know, recycling, and ways to help our school and community with that. BRE TV, which is what's making this all possible today. Uh, yearbook, Science Fair, Math Olympiad, Battle of the Books, Geography B, Spelling B, and Destination Imagination. These are all things that we have offered before and once we're able to meet in different groups, these are the types of things that will be coming back. Hello, BRE Heard. I'm Kathy Denault. I'm the music teacher. Let's do introductions first. Wait, cut. <laughs> Let's redo this. Okay, okay. okay.
That's terrible. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> hey, Ari Heard. I'm Kathy Denault. I'm the music teacher. This is the start of my 22nd year at Buffalo Ridge. Um, and I'm so excited to be here. And I'm going to learn a lot this year with this crazy new weird year. Um, I have my husband, Ben. I have a son, Linus, who is in seventh grade at Rocky Heights. He went through Buffalo Ridge also. Um, I'm very invested in this community. Uh, we have the best kids and we have the best families and I'm so excited to be with you all this year. Hey, have you already heard? I'm Kelly Weinrich. This is my first year. So I'm very excited to be welcome to the family and get to know you guys. Um, I have my husband, Neil, and two dogs, Bandit and Ranger. So we just moved to Colorado and we are so thrilled to be here. Nice. And I'm Tim Rickman, and what this is my fourth year at Buffalo Ridge and my 23rd year of teaching. And um, I love getting to see your kids and what they create every day. Um, as far as a little bit about me, I, my wife Alex is a kindergarten teacher, and I have a 17 year old son who's a senior in high school. His name is Jack, and my daughter Ruthie just started ninth grade this year. And let us tell you guys a little bit about what we're going to be doing this year. One very important thing for parents to remember is that uh, we kind of flipped our schedule upside down from last year. Uh, in a normal year, uh, students would start a special on Monday and go all the way through Friday. Uh, but this year, given that we have all of the kids remote on Friday, uh, we're working on a kind of a flip class model to try to maximize the in-class time that we have. So this is the schedule that we're gonna be running this year just to make sure that you guys understand uh, where your kiddos will be as far as specials. So uh, in the month of September, for example, uh, students will start in their new, uh, new special on a Friday. And we will post a lesson uh, online. We'll videotape ourselves introducing the materials and the activity that we're gonna be using and doing. So basically their assignment for remote learning on Friday is to watch the introduction to their next week special. The reason why that's really important is because then when they come in for their first day of in-learning, either Monday or Tuesday, they have the directions, they know exactly what to do, and we can actually just spend in-class time doing it. So our specials will be running Friday through Thursday, and then on that next Friday, they'll actually start their next special through Thursday, their next special, and so on. So we wanted to make sure that parents understood that our specials are running Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then they'll start their next rotation. All right, so let's see what it looks like in Google Classroom. We'll open up the kids' classroom, go up to the top and click on Classwork. And off to the left, we have all their different subjects. Here's Mr. Rickman. He has an art palette. Coach W has a softball by hers. Mrs. Denault has music notes by hers. You can scroll down, see what work is due for the kids. Make sure you click on any links, any videos, any forms that the kids need to fill out. Also remember to hit submit so that the teachers get the work. Uh, Coach W might have kids film themselves on Flipgrid. Mr. Rickman has posted a sketchbook introduction for the kids. Make sure you watch all the videos, fill out all the forms, hit submit, so that the teachers get the work that the kids did. Okay, so as you can see, Fridays are gonna be really important because that's the day that we're all going to be introducing your kids to the next week's special. So Fridays, during that remote learning time, please make sure you go to your kiddo's Google Classroom. Right underneath whatever special they have that week, you'll see some kind of a video explaining what you're gonna be doing. So check that out. Fridays are really important for specials. If you have any questions about all the craziness and specials this year, please make sure you can contact one of us, Kathy Denault, Kelly Weinrich, Tim Rickman, Thank you so much, you guys. We appreciate you watching. Hi, I'm Monica Harmon. I am the tech resource teacher here at Buffalo Ridge. This is my 18th year at Buffalo Ridge and my 26th year of teaching. I think I just dated myself. 
I work with staff and students on STEM projects, integrating technology, and information literacy skills. Right now, we've been working on getting all those devices in your kids' hands, making sure applications are working. Soon you can be looking for activities that I'll be posting in their Google Classrooms for different STEM activities, design thinking activities, technology activities that go along with your kids' classroom work. It is great to be here at Buffalo Ridge. I really enjoy every year working with the students here and looking forward to this year as well. Hello, Buffalo Ridge families. Welcome to Back to School Night virtually. <laughs> my name is Alex Nardi. I'm the school counselor at Buffalo Ridge. I'm excited to be back for my second year. As a school counselor, I'm a support for all the students at Buffalo Ridge and I plan to interact with them in some kind of capacity this school year to support their social, emotional, and academic development. Some ways I might do this, I might work with your student individually. This includes like personal safety issues. I might work in a small group where we're picking a specific topic that we're working on. Maybe we're gonna do lunch groups where it's a little bit more of a social kind of group where we can kind of get to know each other and I get to know my students a little bit better. Conflicts resolution meetings, this can be for having a hard time with friends and in classrooms, when I do some social emotional lessons. I'll be sending out a letter soon, a letter from the counselor um, with some more detailed information, stuff around how students can work with me and how students work with me a little bit more regularly as well as um, information on how to set up virtual meetings with me if that's what you prefer. Um, but right now my email is Alexandra, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-A, -E period, Nardi, N-A-R-D-I, at dcsdk12.org and my office phone number is 303-387-5581. Feel free to reach out to, reach out to me with any questions and I will do my best to help. Welcome to VRE and happy new school year. But we want to share some other exciting stuff and that is our BREA and that is our parent group that does just supports us tremendously, takes things off of everyone's plate, plans awesome things. So on this slide right here, you guys are gonna see all the different positions and who is in that position. Please feel free to reach out, share any ideas. We're always looking for people to attend the general meetings. So we just wanted to have, we just wanted to give you an idea of what some of the different positions were and who was in those positions. Right here we have a slide that talks about the different supports that we offer. So our BREA supports teacher startup funds, parent-teacher conference dinners, holiday giving projects, sweets and treats for staff, Apple Awards, Teacher Staff Appreciation Week, our BRE Garden Club, and the Science Fair. So we hope that some of those things are gonna get back in in the spring, but for right now, you know, we're used to having carnival and rock slide right off the bat, movie nights, fourth and fifth grade sock, sock hop, our father-daughter dance, our mother-son night, and our BRE extravaganza. Our September events that we are having, no matter what, are our survival pack um, sales, and that ends tomorrow. So for those of you that have seen them, they're awesome. They're little backpacks, um, and they have our logo on the front, and inside there's a BRE mask, and there is some hand sanitizer, and I think a clip, a lanyard type clip for your mask. So the kids are having a ball with it. Sales do end on that tomorrow. So if you want one, don't worry, you can still get one, but please send your student in with a check for that. And everything is on the BRE website, the BREA website, I'm sorry. So Spirit Gear Sale, 9-8 to 9-17, we're having a Spirit Gear Sale. And we love school spirit. And there's nothing like showing your school spirit than having some swag, some Buffalo Ridge swag on. So get on there, find some fun things for your kids, get some stuff for yourself. So I can wave to you at the carpool pickup and all that. So we encourage you, encourage you to get some of that if you haven't gotten any. I'm gonna share more about the readathon in just a second, but know that the dates that that's going to be running are 914 to um, October 8th. Right here is how you can get in touch with everyone from the BREA. Obviously, since they're not coming in, otherwise we would have had them film it. I would way rather have you looking at their beautiful faces than this ugly mug, but this is what you're stuck with right now because we're not having um, people in the building. So I'm trying to give, put out this information with justice. So here is how you can get a hold of everybody. So please, please contact with any questions. It's buffaloridgebrea at gmail.com to stay up to date on the events and when things are happening 
happening, there's a site right there and you can also follow on Facebook. Now the exciting times, read for funds. We have a little flyer right here that you can refer back to. Um, I'm not gonna go over it all because it'll be in the slideshow and you can always skip ahead on YouTube. You know you can just move right ahead to where you need to be in order to see each slide. But some basic information that I wanna give you guys is just thank you for being a vital part of our community and a partner in ensuring our students have the environment, resources, and care they need to grow and thrive. Uh, this year is unprecedented and will require extra attention to ensuring clean and productive environment of learning. As such, we'll be adding a new fundraiser this year, Read for Funds, a readathon that promotes reading and celebration as a school community, both things that we love. Um, there is much that we are hoping to achieve with this fundraiser. We will be rolling out next week to students and families to help reach our goal of $50,000 for our amazing school community. Please check your student's backpack for the save the date on this new fundraiser. And down here we have, um, I wanna just tell you guys a little bit about some things that the funds would be used for. So we're gonna, the read funds will encourage excitement for reading 20 minutes a day for 10 days, which is a critical part of a student's academic foundation, while encouraging each student to raise money for our school with, the, with um, exciting school class and individual incentives that will be announced next week. This will foster a sense of community and solidarity in a time when our students may be hybrid or e-learners or every student in class is working towards a goal um, of $50,000. So it's a great way to kind of bring everybody back in. This is a way for us to help raise funds to help maintain and grow the learning environment and resources available to our students. The funds are going towards $10,000 per grade for reading curriculum updates and a fund for an EA um, for the class sizes that are really large. We have a class size that is up to 32. And the reason why this is so crucial is because if your child was in a class that was really large, you would want us to wrap all of our supports around you and ensure that those students were able to get what they need. Um, all students are able to invite family and friends near and far to contribute to the incentive and promote a joy for reading through individual websites, which will be provided to track reading and money donated online. Also, if your company um, is interested in sponsoring or doing a corporate match, please know that this, this is uh, more money is for our school pockets. So please consider this as well and touch base with someone from the BREA fundraising um, if there's a website you can get in contact with. Uh, we are so truly grateful for your support and partnership in enabling us to achieve greater levels of adaptability and resilience for our students. So we just, we can't thank you enough. It's, it's hard sometimes in public schools because it's like, especially with when we weren't here in the spring and we couldn't do our fundraiser, um, we just rely so heavily on our community and our community um, support. So I hate to be crying for money, but here I am crying for money. So if you can help us in any way, we would just, we would really appreciate it. We think the kids are gonna have a blast with this. Some of the things that we're doing for um, the incentives and just the different things that the teachers are gonna be doing are gonna be really fun. So we just encourage you to read more about it, support us if you can, and um, reach out if you have any questions. Thanks so much. For tonight's schedule, you get me at the beginning and then um, our classroom presentations will be happening and they will have links to um, all these things as well. So if you want to go back and rewatch something, it will be available. This is new for all of us, as you can see, as I struggled through this without having you guys in front of me, it's just so much better when I can, when I can see faces and things like that. But again, we're just so thankful to have you here. We're so thankful to have our kids back and we're just lucky that you guys chose Buffalo Ridge as your school. And I'm a huge communicator and I love communication. So I can only fix things that I know about. So believe it or not, when you tell your neighbor, it doesn't always get to me. So you have to call me, you have to, we have to have a conversation. So just know that I'm here for you. Our staff is here for you. We want to work with you. Don't let things become a problem. Just please, please, please reach out to us. We love you, we're glad that you're here and I look forward to seeing you more in person soon. Thanks so much.